I am not sure most of you have experienced my personal style of the rhetor of, of sermons. So I usually try, if possible, to start with a joke. That doesn't mean the joke is good, but I try. So based on a why I do I do this? Because based on a story in the Talmud about a rabbi in the Tractate of Shabbat, page 30b, uh, a rabbi who, whose name was Rabbi, he used to start his Debray Torah, his classes, with something called Milta Dibdichuta. Milta Dibdichuta is Dabar Mevadeach in Hebrew, or Milta Dibdichuta is in Aramaic, is a joke. So a joke that would relax the students and then teach a class. So that's usually why I try to start my sermons with a joke. So here we go. Let's try. Working in a, in a mirror factory is something I can totally see myself doing. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I tried. I tried. You know, I love puns. You know, I entered 10 puns. I entered 10 puns in a, in a pun contest hoping one would win. No pun intended. Let me repeat that one, okay? <laughs> I entered 10 puns in a pun contest hoping one would win. No pun intended. Okay, enough, enough. I know, I know. I told you the joke about the mirrors because many times, that was the first joke, okay? Uh, many times the Torah speaks in a reflective way. Or if you prefer, if we need to put together two different parts of the Torah, to understand them, we need to put them in front, one in front of each other, like a mirror image. It's easier to understand what we are reading if we compare it or we put it in front of another part of the Torah. So I think the Parsha we read today is one of these occasions. And before I expand on this, let me share with you another story of the Talmud. This one comes from the Tractate of Erubin, page 54. And it's a description of how the Torah was transmitted and taught every single day. So God taught Moses Torah. Every day Moses was in the tent. God will reveal to Moses and speak and teach Moses Torah. Then Aaron, Moses' brother, will enter and sit in front of Moses. And Moses will teach what he had heard from God and pass it to Aaron. Aaron then will sit next to Moses and... Aaron's sons, Eleazar and Itamar, will come in. So they will sit in front of Moses. Moses will teach Eleazar and Itamar the same thing that God had taught him. Then Eleazar and Itamar, Aaron's sons, will move next to Aaron and Moses and sit next to them. And then the 70 elders will enter and Moses will teach them Torah. After that, the whole people will be passing by all day long and Moses will be teaching them Torah all day long. So Moses repeated the Torah and that's how you learn. Basically, repetition, it's a very easy way to learn. So this is how the Torah was taught. But Rashi explains that this is not how this Parsha was taught. This Parsha was taught or was told to the whole people together. Do you remember anything like that that was told to the whole people? So let me ask you, what else was spoken to the whole people as a people when they were all together? Ten Commandments, exactly. You were here before. That's great. So the Ten Commandments were given to the whole people of Israel when they were together. And this Parsha as well, because this Parsha mirrors, in some ways, the Ten Commandments. Let's explore this. In the Ten Commandments it says, I am Hashem your Lord. In our Parsha it says, I, I, I am Hashem your Lord. Ani Hashem Eloichem. The Ten Commandments say, you shall not have other gods in front of me. And here we read, we read do not turn to idols. And molten gods do not make for you. It is written in the Ten Commandments, you shall not use the name of God in vain. And here the Torah says, you shall not swear falsely by the name of God. And so on and so on. You shall not steal, lotignov, say the Ten Commandments. And in this parsha we hear, lotignovu, you shall not, you shall not steal. Every person should revere father and mother. Yes. You should honor your father and your mother. And the Torah today says, You should revere your mother and your father. And so on. All the commandments are mirrored one in front of each other. And at the end of the day, what is 
the last commandment, you shall not covet. And we have in, in front of the mirror what goes with we shall not covet. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? That's a very well-known phrase of the Torah. So there is no doubt that there's an internal dialogue in the Torah. The Torah is presenting this mitzvot to the people of Israel exactly like in Mount Sinai. So let's try to see or to check, to explore the beginning of the Parsha, the introductory statement that is going to introduce all the content. The Parsha opens with the commandment or with the words, Kedoshim to you, you shall be, we shall be holy. Kedoshim to you. God speaks to the people of Israel and God is telling you should be holy. So what does it mean to be holy? What is the Torah suggesting by placing the two mirrors one in front of each other? What is the Torah trying to tell us or to convey by almost repeating the Ten Commandments exactly? So I want to ask you to use your imagination for a second and think for a moment. Think of two mirrors, one reflecting of each other. Now, you enter in between these two mirrors and you see your image. Think of your image being reflected on a mirror and reflect what we receive. A smile, maybe, a comforting word, an act of loving kindness. Think of you being able to give back all the blessings that you have. Think of you being able to mimic, to replicate all the good that you have received. Can you picture that in front of yourself? Take a second and try to picture all the goodness you have received in your life. Isn't it almost impossible to give it back, right? You receive so much goodness. So being a holy people, being a holy nation, being a holy person means to be able to give, to share, to inspire, to give back. What does Kedoshim to you mean? It's both a commandment and a promise. If you check the Hebrew, it's not just a commandment, it's also a promise. It's talking in the future. You will be holy. You shall be holy, but also you will be holy. It's a promise that if we reflect, we transmit, we return a smile, if we make others shine, if we comfort others, we would be loving our neighbors as ourselves. That is Kedoshim to you. So today, the commandment is to be holy. Kedoshim to you, we shall be holy. We are here to look at the mirror of life and be a holy person, a holy people. And by the way, working as a, at a mirror factory, I totally see myself doing that. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>